I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the wonderful film To Leslie. We are joined by director Michael Morris, as well as cast members Mark Marin, Owen Teague, and Stephen Root. And, and Michael, starting with you, I wanted to talk about the framing of this movie because I love the way that with the character of Leslie, you've started out in a lot of frames, keeping her very singular when we see her because of the isolation of the character. And then as she goes through sobriety, as her world starts to open up a little bit around herself again, and she reestablishes relationships in her life, you allow other people into that frame and come a little bit wider. And so I was really interested in how you landed on a lot of those specific choices along the way to reflect the emotional narrative of the film. Oh, hi. Well, that's a great question. Um, and, and I'm really glad that you watched it with that framework in mind. Yeah, a lot of the choices we made in the film were to inhabit Leslie's world. I think that's just the place we started. Do you know what I mean? This is a very, it's a, a film with a very singular point of view. And, and, uh, and to me, that was the way into the script, the way into the character, the way into what we were going to tell was, was, was what it was like in a way to be with Leslie. So na naturally, a lot of the times we are, the camera is literally with Leslie. And, and, and another big, um, I think, aim and intent and hope for the film was that we would experience this passage of time with Leslie and gradually, as you say, the people that she lets in or has no choice but to let in, uh, we experience this, this time with her in a sort of non-judgmental way. So sometimes the camera is really tight on her when she's doing things that we would maybe not want her to do or disapprove of or wish she hadn't done, right? And, and, and that's one of the things, it's like, we're not gonna step back and, uh, and sort of relieve some of that tension. Ideally, we just wanna, I wanted the camera to feel like it was in her head. And then, as you say, we open up until we get to a place where uh, Mark's character, Sweeney, has brought her to, to, a, to a, like a spring festival outside. And it's there that we get some of the, the wider shots um, that we have in the movie. Um, from, we made a choice deliberately not to, to stay away from big wide shots and, and, try, and keep the, try and keep it framed, as I said, very intimately. <laughs> I love that. And, and speaking of the character Sweeney coming over to you, Mark, um, one of the things I love in your portrayal of this character is he really is someone who doesn't listen to outside voices. He lets other people tell them who they are and he allows them to kind of, he has best faith in people unless they prove otherwise. Um, and within that, he has such optimism and, and really sees something in Leslie that other people no longer do. And at the same time, you've crafted him in a way that he also doesn't feel like a complete pushover. You know, the second time that she's like, oh, my alarm didn't go off when she hasn't shown up for work on time, he just silently walks straight past her. So even if he's not gonna fire her, he's gonna make sure that she knows that that's not okay. Um, and so how did you set about really creating that balance of optimism and, and really kind of over reaching support without ever allowing him to feel like a pushover? Well, I, you know, thankfully I have some uh, experience with codependency and uh, I know, uh, you know, what it's like to be in relationship with somebody who's chaotic and out of control and, you know, what the lines are there. And, and also I, I allowed myself to, to sort of, you know, really see something in the character, you know, th that she was doing, you know, and connect with it emotionally and sort of follow my instincts on, on that. But, but I, I felt like he was a guy that ha had been through his own sort of pain and his own troubles and whatever got him to that job in that place, uh, you know, was something that I don't know if he necessarily had regrets, but I, I think he definitely had some, you know, karma points he wanted to make up. So, and I think he saw in her that opportunity and then became more emotionally involved with her. But, uh, but because of his experience, you know, he certainly wasn't going to let himself be fully taken advantage of. But it's a little uh, blurry because of his emotional connection that grows throughout the movie. I love that answer. And and Owen, for you, in terms of, of playing Leslie's son in the film, I was interested in how you and Andrea found the emotional landscape of, of what that was going to look like, because he has been left behind her, by her for the last six years. They haven't seen each other. And for the ages of like 13 to 19 are so incredibly formative as well for a period of time for him not to have had his mother around. And then he's welcoming into her into his home, but he's also putting up a lot of protective walls around himself. You know, setting ground rules and even just emotionally kind of letting her be the one to ask him questions, not being the one to be forthcoming straight away. Um, and so how did you find the emotional landscape as well as the guardrails that he's trying to protect himself with? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, that, at least in my experience, especially when it comes to people like 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 Leslie, you know, we as humans have sort of multiple sides to us, um, and and so there's there's James, the adult, who who you know was raised by by Dutch and and, and Nancy, and and kind of has can really take care of himself um and and has to put up these these boundaries with with her in order to to keep himself safe but then within that there's also james who's who's you know still a kid and and wants a mom and so it was like balancing those two sides of of this character and and yeah and and and, and finding where that kid can come out mm-hmm. And, and Stephen, you're playing Dutch, who's in a relationship with Nancy, played by Alison Janney. Um, and I wanted to ask a little bit about how you found the space of that relationship once Leslie comes into it, because obviously having anybody come into the room changes the dynamic. But for them, it's so emotionally loaded. There's conflict that comes to the surface between the two of them, which we kind of hear from outside when she's listening in and hearing all of that. Um, and so how did you look at the dynamic of what that relationship was between these two couples, these two characters, and then how that shifts and changes when Leslie walks into their space and is suddenly in their home? Well, I think uh, <clears throat> what you said er- early about the isolationism in the thing is um, the first scene that they have together, they don't say a word. He, he's picking her up and he, and he says everything by not saying anything to her. Uh and uh, for for somebody, so for two old bikers who you'd think would have a, a very loose uh, system of maybe morality and and less rigidity, they are very rigid. He has strict rules, um, and and for her to come into that, his expectation is you follow the rules or you're gone. You know, and that's not something I, I probably would have thought about uh, for for the Dutch character. You know, because they sit around smoking pot and and being being themselves. But he has a very rigid, rigid uh, sensibility, and uh, when she comes into that, she has to adhere to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I love what Stephen's saying there about moments of silence and you know, there doesn't always need to be a lot of exposition in a moment, in, yeah. you know, particularly when it comes to all of these characters' history with her, but we really get the emotional undercurrent. And so for all of you, I wanted to ask about how you really wanted to use the tool of silence in this film, because in the way that Michael's directed it, he's never afraid to just allow the camera to linger on your characters for moments. And there's moments where the silence explains mm-hmm. so much about these emotional dynamics. So for whoever wants to, to jump in on that. Yeah, it's hard for me to shut up. So yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, it was a real exercise in acting like this. The, the whole opportunity to do this thing for me was a, a unique opportunity in terms of my acting experience, which is which is not vast, but it was definitely a challenge. And it was a guy who wasn't me, but I also knew, knew that he was a thoughtful guy. And, and I knew because of his, you know, his patience uh, with her that you know he was going to be kind of a simmering dude if he was going to be anything he wasn't really going to be explosive and you know he wasn't going to really be yammering all the time so for me the 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 silence became about almost exclusively you know reacting to her and giving her the room that she needed as a character but also as an actor to a certain degree because she's like you know she's like great so like there was parts of me that were just sort of like, yeah, let's just let's let's just watch her and then wait a second. <laughs> well, I can uh, let me speak, speak to that really quickly as well, because um, because in life, right, like there's no sign, there's no there's no sort of dead spots. We never we never stop acting. Do you know what I mean? And because we're off camera. And and this was the idea of make, one of the one of the big attractions to me about making the film the way we did is that. Uh, it, right from the start, the guiding principle was no exposition. There is no exposition in the film. You know, there really isn't. Um, we never, except for the, the very smallest maybe line here or there. So what are we doing in those silences? Well, for, for Owen and for Stephen's characters, they've been hurt really badly in the past, right? So a lot of those silences are critical, I think, to the storytelling because it's weighing up moment by moment. Am I being an idiot? Am I going to be hurt again? 
You know, what am I doing? Whereas for, uh, for Mark, just like he said, which I love this sort of weird little distinction that you can sort of feel when you watch the movie. He doesn't have a personal history with her. He wasn't hurt by her in the past. He's been hurt and, and touched by this issue, you know, such as it is before. So he's doing his own thing of gathering information. There's a lot of gathering information. Who is she? You know, can I believe her? Am I being an idiot? And, and, uh, and to me, to answer your, your excellent question, you can cut silences out of films. People do it every day. Um, but to me, it's about trying to preserve them as much as possible and actually let us sort of live in them for a bit. Because that's when a lot of, you know, my, my amazing cast were doing some of their best work. It was off the, off the dialogue. And for both of you, Stephen and, and Owen, you know, because there is that real history with her for your characters, there's also this juxtaposition where they each have moments of anger and frustration with her, but the love doesn't go away. The, those two sides of love and anger and frustration really coexist in terms of the emotional space for your characters. And so I was interested for both of you in, in how you really worked to portray both of those sides and to allow both of those things to be constantly true for them. Uh, I, it just, for me, um, he wants so badly for her to, to actually do what she says she's going to do. And, and uh, I, I, I think that that is all he wants. It's, it's a pretty simple process for him. If you can do this, then you can stay and I'll, and I'll by increasing degrees respect you. And uh, as, as Michael said, I think it's all said in silence pretty much. Um, so um, I forget the, the actual question, but, but uh, <laughs> to be able to just sit in it sometimes is, is great, is yeah. great. And for, for me with, with, with keeping that kind of, you know, the love underneath the anger and the frustration. Yeah. I remember one thing that, that you and I talked about, Michael was like the, the, the explosion at her when it finally comes, you know, is is yeah like i'm i'm in a lot of pain and i really you know the the way to keep the love in there is because i i desperately want and hope for a relationship with my mother but it's also like that's how i have to communicate to her to get through um because that's the only way that she can understand um cuz she's so far into that so yeah so that's that was kind of how we kept that that hope inside of it yeah. for dutch to be able to e e even express that i mean he, he, there's a scene in the outside where they're they're basically you know he does it through humor if you're making fun of what you know uh, she's she's been bad all this time and, and they, they all have a big laugh over it but i think it's it is his way to to say that he really does love her and he hopes that he'll get to that place. And, and Michael, I did want to talk a little bit about the dynamic in working with Andrea Riseborough, particularly when it came to the representation of a character who has a reliance on alcohol and a, and a journey through sobriety, because this isn't someone who goes to a bar and has a few too many to drink and all of a sudden is throwing up in the bathroom. There's, there's a functionality because it's been part of her life for so long. Um, and I also thought it really represented, you know, the, the difference in, okay, what does it look like when she's had one or two drinks? What does it look like when she's been at the bar all night? You know, and again, those are moments where you really just allow yourself to to linger on her performance in those moments um and so what were some of the discussions that you and andrea had about what you wanted that to look like and how you wanted to represent this journey for her yeah it's a it's andrea is a, a a very very specific um performer and she's um she's a sort of whole person performer meaning you know she she will she sort of keeps the keeps the character alive between takes and between you know so so for us, it was, and we were on an incredibly tight schedule. This is something that, you know, it just goes, it should be mentioned just because of the work these guys did. It, it was absolutely focused. There was no time to sort of, there was no time. You know, we did it the whole movie in, in 19 days. And, um, and because of the grouping, sometimes for Mark and, and Andre and Andrea, they were, we were dealing with eight, nine, 10 scenes a day with, at the motel. There was no time. So, so uh, with Andrea and I, to answer your question, we, we had a very specific idea at the beginning about the sort of physicality that she would, that, that this character 
might show uh, a lot of it like a lot of really good acting in this area is about not overplaying it um but it was a lot of work with our mate with our hair and makeup team um to, to really chart where we were exactly as you said has she been drinking today how how long has it been since she's had a drink because that affects her skin tone and the way and, and her level of fidget you know has she just had one? Uh, what will that do to her, the way the way she focuses and deep focuses her eyes? I mean, I, the good news is with all of these, these actors, and particularly with Andrea being called on every single day, all day, um, she's she's an artist, you know what I mean? And she was actually, she was a dancer, I think, at one point in her life. She's very physical. So there are some moments in the movie, one of them after Mark's character has picked her up and she comes back to the... The, the motel where she's living and she tries to get her key into the door. It's a very small detail. There's no, again, another moment with no dialogue, but she's seen something she wants to get inside. And just the, you know, this little moment of struggle of, 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 of no matter how much you want to get that key in the door, she can't. I mean, my editor kept calling me uh, on the dailies going, she's drunk, right? She's, she's actually drunk. There's no, and I had to, so for the record, no, she was not drunk when, when we shot the movie. <laughs> I love that. And and Mark, coming back to your portrayal of your character as well, the, the script is so wonderful and the fact that it gives so much detail and backstory for you about everything that he went through with his ex-wife in terms of his ex-wife going through sobriety as well. And so he's kind of been on a version of this journey before, um, you know, and I love that we even get that moment where we get to see him with his daughter and with his, his grandkid. And so how did having so many details like that really flesh out a lot of the space that he finds himself in and being there to support Leslie, because he kind of instinctively knows I can't be the person to fix you, but I can be the person to support you through this. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a sad truth about uh, people who uh, you you can't help what your heart is sort of compelled towards. You know, like a guy who's been through that before is not just going to go out and find somebody that has no problems because there's no interface there. So, you know, managing the boundaries and. Uh, and, and also having all that information, which was great because, you know, I can you know, plug that into my personal emotional sphere pretty, pretty easily. But also that that scene when we're sitting out there and I'm and I'm telling her that. It's probably the first time in the movie where she really kind of sees me, you know, and I, you know, and I could feel that. And, and so that stuff was landing. And, and because of that, it was sort of landing for me as well in that moment. And, and I, and I, and I think I feel in that, in that scene that, you know, he kind of, he kind of, it, it's sort of a, an offer, I think, in a way to, to like, let her in to that vulnerable place and, and, and allowing her to know that, you know, he's dealt with this shit before and, and that, you know, he understands it and her and, you know, are, are we going to be able to kind of move forward with this you know if we we are great if we're not you know so be it it was always a thing with that guy that it felt like he could fairly easily let go of things in terms of uh heartbreak uh you know he's living in heartbreak all the time and then when when the family comes around um yeah that's that's all it's all it's all pretty sweet stuff for for a guy who uh who sort of made it through and i think you know leslie seeing that it, it had it had to be all encouraging, but it's weird with characters like Leslie in real life. You, you don't you don't really know if they're gonna pull it together. It, it's yeah, that's always the core of the movie. It's sort of like, is she? You know, all the way to the end, you're like, all right, well, I hope this works out for her. That's right. There's no promises beyond the night that we show, right? You know, yeah, because it's day to day. That's such a great point and something that I really loved about the tone in the way that the film ended. And it's it's such a beautifully constructed film. So congratulations to all of you on everything. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great pleasure. pleasure.